On Thursday, I told Virginians that we would be making an announcement today uh, regarding phase two. So uh, because of our attention in recent days uh, that has been on these protests, uh, we are still in this pandemic. Um, and that, as a side note, I would urge all of those protesting as I previously did to remember to wear face coverings and to try to physically distance yourself. This is not only for your protection, but for others as well. We've been in phase one for nearly three weeks and our health data continues to look good. Our hospitals do not report any shortage of PPE and we work continuously to help make sure our medical facilities have the PPE that they need. Our hospital bed capacity remains steady. Statewide, the percentage of people hospitalized with a positive or pending COVID test has a slight downward trend. Our health data metrics show that testing is increasing and the percent of tests that are positive continues to trend downward. In fact, for Virginia excluding the northern region, the percent of tests that are positive has shown a generally downward trajectory to around 10 percent, while the number of tests has increased. And now, based on that data, I feel comfortable allowing most of Virginia to move into phase two this Friday, which will be June the 5th. And I say most of Virginia, Northern Virginia and the city of Richmond will remain in phase one. They only moved into phase one last Friday and we need more time to monitor their health metrics. Accomack County remained in phase zero because of high case numbers due to outbreaks among poultry plant workers. Thanks to rigorous testing, we believe we have that outbreak well under control. Accomack may move into phase two as the rest of Virginia does. Phase two will include more flexibility for restaurants, gyms, sports, outdoor entertainment venues, and gatherings of up to 50 people. It means restaurants can have indoor seating again at 50% of their capacity. It means gyms and fitness centers can have indoor classes and workouts at 30% of their capacity and pools can open with some restrictions. It means some of our entertainment venues like museums and zoos, botanical gardens and outdoor venues can reopen again with some restrictions. It means recreational sports are allowed with physical distancing requirements and no shared equipment. And it means swimming pools can be open to exercise and swim instruction. But we are still safer at home. Gatherings will be limited to 50 people rather than 10. We still strongly encourage teleworking and physical distancing. And face coverings are required in indoor spaces. We'll talk about all of this in more depth on Thursday but the details will be available on our website later today. We also know that with more people returning to work, more people will need childcare. I want to thank our child care providers for, for providing care for the children of essential workers throughout this pandemic and for the work they continue to do to care for children of working families as we ease restrictions. Our Department of Social Services is sending guidance to our child care providers so they can prepare, particularly around health and safety measures. And we will discuss that more on Thursday as well. So thank you all for being with us today and I will be glad. I think we have a couple uh, callers on the line. I'll be glad to take their uh, calls or questions. Yeah, first up is Alan Suderman with the Associated Press. Uh, good afternoon, Governor. Um, at the uh, start of the last legislative session, you said you were still studying um, what to do with the big uh, Robert E. Lee statue that sits on state property and on Monument Avenue. Have you reached a decision about what should be done with that? The question is about the Robert E. Lee statue on Monument Avenue. And just to, I think, Alan, I appreciate the question, but I think just for the audience, 
uh, the great majority of the statues in Richmond and most of those along Monument Avenue are owned by the city of Richmond. Robert E. Lee statue, which is also on Monument Avenue, is owned by the Commonwealth of Virginia. Um, we introduced and passed legislation uh, this year in the General Assembly to allow the localities uh, to have discussions regarding uh, these monuments. Um, and I supported that and signed that into law. And so as Richmond or any other city uh, has discussions on how to deal with these uh, statues, and there are a lot of uh, options, a lot of discussion has taken place and will continue to take place, uh, I will follow that discussion and really follow the lead of our, our mayor, our city council, and the people that live in Virginia. Uh, excuse me, the people that live in the city of Richmond. Thank you. Um, Governor, as of today, the deaths of nearly 800 Virginians from COVID-19 are linked to long-term care. And the figures released yesterday by CMS have the nursing homes reporting fewer than half that number. If that's accurate, would the balance of deaths be occurring in assisted living and group homes that are under no public reporting mandate? Um, you know, Virginia has continued to refuse not just to name these places, but to state which localities and neighborhoods they're located in. And there's no information given on race and ethnicity. Um, will you reconsider your administration's position and at least begin to report on the localities and demographics of the cases and deaths in these homes? Uh, Dr. Fulano, do you want to address the nursing home? Mm -hmm. Um, so as I understand the question, it's whether we will reconsider our uh, policy regarding uh, stating the names and uh, locations of uh, skilled nursing facilities and assisted living facilities that um, have outbreaks of uh, COVID-19. And at this time, we are not uh, re reconsidering uh, that policy. As uh, you know, uh, CMS has... Uh, uh, issued a rule that skilled nursing facilities will have to um, p uh, report such outbreaks and uh, CMS will be posting those uh, names uh, at some point on uh, one of their uh, sites. Taylor Coleman with ABC 13 in Lynchburg. Hi, Governor. Here in Lynchburg, Liberty University President Jerry Falwell Jr. tweeted that he wear a mask with the alleged blackface photo from your yearbook page on it. Now, this tweet has led to a lot of unrest the last few nights here in Lynchburg. Uh, what would you say to Mr. Falwell and your message to the protesters upset with the tweet? The question was about a tweet uh, that came from the president of Liberty University regarding uh, the wearing of face masks and what those uh, face masks would, would uh, look like. I, I would just say that in response that um, my background in neurology and, and psychiatry is to uh, deal and, and really help uh, parents uh, deal with their children's behavior. Um, and Child Psychology 101, Chapter 1, tells us do not water the weeds. Uh, and I would consider the source. Yes? All right. Well, thank you all again. Uh, and we will, today is... Tuesday. Uh, we will talk more on Thursday about moving into phase two uh, and also talk about youth sports. I had intended to do that today, but uh, we're going to talk in more detail uh, on Thursday and, and certainly be able to answer uh, a lot more of your questions as well. So we appreciate you being here. Uh, thanks for your patience and uh, have a good afternoon. Thank you.